did you have a convo? I mean, so first and foremost, just hearing that story about SAG and all of these things, for Lupita to make it to where she is. Miracle. Like it's in. It's not even a miracle. It's, it's, it's <laughs> for her to enjoy the sort of success that she has. And I'm talking about from the point of view of someone who knows how the industry works. It is hard. And, and I know it because she herself told me how hard it was for her to break in. And this is when she was living in New York, trying to break into the scene. This was about three years before 12 Years a Slave came along and changed everything. But that's a story for a bit later on. I'll just talk about how the advantage to being an African means that if they're ever looking for Africans, I always got called first. So I was like, there's a gig in this area that's far, like 45 minutes away from Philly where they need uh, an actor who can be a convincing African. Can you do it? I'm like, sure. Or one audition that I thought was really special was for a film called, oh my God, I've forgotten the name of the film. But the stars of the film were Sean Penn and Naomi Watts, I believe. I've completely forgotten the name of the film. And you are an, a background again? No, this one I was being called to audition for a speaking role. Yo. But I had to get on a bus to go to DC to audition there. And then when I thought that that was like a strange thing, I realized a lot of actors do it. You jump on a bus to travel four hours to show up for an audition. Be in that room for 15 minutes. And you're, and you're, up, you're, 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 you're told you're coming in at 3.15. You come in at 3.20, you're already you know, bad because yeah. you're late. But, but, but after 3.30, 15 minutes have passed, you're disqualified. You can't audition. So I had to make sure I was there on time. I had my lines memorized. I had auditioned and, and rehearsed and rehearsed over and over with Nick. And I was going to audition for the role of a Sierra Leonean taxi driver. And when I was reading that audition notice, I just received a call. Though. I remember we had guests in the house and I received a call from someone saying, hello, am I speaking to Mugambi? And I'm like, yes. Uh, Mugambi, are you available to show up for an audition in DC, Washington DC on this and this date at this and this time? I was like, yeah, yes, I am. And they're like, fine. Uh, I have your email address. I'm going to send you the sides. And the sides are the things that you're going to be auditioning from. I want to actually pull them up now. Um, and I was going to be playing the role of a taxi driver, Sierra Leonean taxi driver, and my passenger, who I was going to be having a conversation with, was Sean Penn. Yo. So, dude, I was like, I cannot mess this audition up. I have to, have to, have to, have to. But uh, it's an audition. Okay. It's an audition. Yeah. It can go either way. Mm -hmm. And I ended up not getting it. Um, uh, let me see, I just want to see if I can still find those, if I can still find those uh, sites. So the email, subject, <clears throat> fair game, audition, taxi driver. If you're available to audition and are available on the shoot dates, please reply to this email with a preferred appointment time, blah, blah, blah. Taxi driver, this fairly jovial taxi driver from Sierra Leone recognizes Joe and insists in cinema on TV. The taxi driver believes that the U.S. is a land of the free and has no corruption, especially compared to his home country. Three speeches and five lines, one scene from Sierra Leone, Africa. And then attached to that is a PDF with a, a, a tiny bit of the script that shows your start and your end. And I got on the bus, traveled three hours to DC to audition for 15 minutes. And I had just enough money for bus fare. And I said, because I've come to DC and this is my first time here, I'll have a meal in a restaurant and then take the bus back. Didn't get the role, but I was the happiest person in the room just to be considered for this. I could have been in a Sean Penn movie. They ended up casting an actual Sierra Leonean. Who mm. didn't act very well, but were like, oh, I guess you weren't really looking for an actor, really. You're looking for some authenticity. And because there's a big Sierra Leonean population, I think, uh, this guy was playing the role of a refugee, I think. So they found one, and he played the role, and that was cool. The other big 
audition or role that I ended up getting was uh, preview staging. Preview meaning it was still a very much work in progress um, staging of a Broadway play in the making. To give you an idea of how long it takes for a play to end up on Broadway, I participated in this preview staging for which I got paid, I think, 175 bucks for two days of work. Maybe more. Well, it was about 200 bucks for two days of work. Mm -hmm. And I was playing the role of, again, an African enslaved person who was, 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 uh, the, the play was called Amazing Grace. And it was about the dude who wrote the song Amazing Grace and how he was a former slave owner and somebody suddenly had a change of heart and said, this is wrong. I can't be here claiming to be obeying God and, and, keeping, and keeping slaves. Yeah, so it was something like that. And then I was one of the, this, this dude shows up in North America, North, somewhere in the, in the North, in the <laughs> part and finds a free slave or something and tries to solicit some help from him. And I was playing the role of this slave person. And this, I, I was doing this in 2009, performed for probably three or 400 people who paid. I got paid a good amount of money. Everyone said the play looked really promising. People wanted to take pictures with me. It was amazing. And I got to play along with a lady who had been one of the lead actresses on Phantom of the Opera on Broadway mm -hmm. and <clears throat> a dude who played a lead role on Les Miserables on Broadway. So I was with Broadway actors and we were receiving equal billing, playing yeah. the role of this, is this Broadway actor, playing the role of this, this Broadway actor, playing the role of this, this Broadway actor and playing the role of Keita. <laughs> one, two, three, four were the four top build actors. Yeah. And the rest was the ensemble. So at this time, are you feeling, <clears throat> okay, this acting thing is beginning to work in America? Or where are you at? I'm at that point where I want it to work, but the kind of work I'm getting is still not there. So in the middle of all that, when we're still wondering, is this whole thing working? We hear that there's... Uh, an African film festival at the Lincoln Theatre. And myself and Nick and Monica get onto a bus, a China bus, and make our way to New York City and go to the Lincoln Theatre. And we're going to watch Judy Kibinge's film, Killer Necklace, and a film called In My Jeans. That was a, a student project of a Kenyan uh, filmmaking student called Lupita Nyong'o. <laughs> So he watched In My Jeans and it was really cool and Lupita was standing outside and she was going up to her and saying congratulations, congratulations, that was amazing. It was a pretty good documentary and this time you already know Lupita. about people living with albinism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lupita was already pretty famous here. She was an actor at Phoenix. Um, she had won a beauty contest. I can't remember which one. It was a beauty contest. I can't remember what it was. Miss Tourism, something like that. Maybe it was Miss Tourism, I can't remember. But she was already pretty famous by this point. Had you met her before? Um, I don't think so. But then you knew, of course, of Lupita. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, of course, now there's camaraderie because we are Kenyans who are living in Philly mm -hmm. who've come to watch a documentary. Yeah. So we said hi, we talked a little bit, and it was just me and her. I asked her, yo, okay, so listen, I know you're trying to get your acting career started here. I know you joined the Yale School of Drama. I've heard about that. I think she'd shot Sugar by this point. Mm -hmm. But she was still trying to make her, her way into the American market. And I was like, yo, the pizza man, yo, I need, you know, tell me, how is it going for you here? Because it's hard in Philly. And she said, it's not easier here. And I'm like, why? She said, it's simple. My accent, a Kenyan accent, color of her skin, that's it. And I'm a woman. There would be that as well, but you know, a female, female, female roles. She doesn't even get to the point where being a, a, a woman female, means you're yes. disadvantaged. Yeah. You know, 
we haven't even gotten to that point where we can <laughs> feel the inequality yet. We're yeah. just at the very bottom. So we had a sort of moment of, oh, man, yeah. Yeah, we hope it works out. And then I was like, yo, Monica, could you please take a picture of Peter and I? This was way before she became famous. So unfortunately, the hard disk that she had that picture stored on crashed. And I don't have a TBT of me oh, posing man. with Lupita. <laughs> With Lupita telling me how hard it is to break into the industry. But she had just joined Yale. She had just joined Yale. And she had her Yale friends there. Also there showing up to support her film. And the rest is history. After that, summer rolled around. And then I got a job. And this was now a job. Proper, proper job. Uh, it still involved acting. But at least I had regular hours. I had a shift. I had a contract. I was paying a little bit of tax and I was receiving a weekly paycheck which was good mm -hmm. and my story was telling stories to tourists about America's history there was a company called Historic Philadelphia that started working in the summer and because Philadelphia is such a meaningful place when it comes to America's history the Declaration of Independence was yeah. signed there um, a lot of the forward movements that happened in America that, you know, independence into a democracy, into Independence Day, all happened in Philly. So over the summer, Philly becomes quite the destination for a lot of people who want to go and see Liberty Bell or want to see uh, the place where the lady who designed the American flag stitched it, happened in Philly, or the room where they signed the Declaration of Independence. And so Philadelphia is called, there's a bit that's called the historic tourism district. And because the equivalent of Brand Kenya there is really smart, they said, hey, how about we get a bunch of actors to tell stories about America's history? So what you did was that you went for an audition, you went and you went and told a story before the committee, the audition committee, and I went and told a story and they said you have the job. Uh, after you got the job, you went for one week of orientation and training and rehearsals. You were given five stories that were about five pages long and you memorized those stories word for word and told them to tourists showing up at your desk. <laughs> and that was my summer job. You start at the park and someone came by and your park had a number and I'd be like welcome to desk uh, to bench number nine would you like to hear a story and if they said yes if they said no you'd be like have a nice day and if they said yes like have a seat and then you stood up and you told them a story this was with my kenyan hustle. accent it was hustle wow, comes wow, wow, in wow, my kenyan wow, accent wow. i would tell a story about a dude who escaped and ended up being taken in by a white dude and this white dude realized he can take in more people and this white dude was instrumental slowly by slowly in building the underground railroad ra railroad along with Harriet Tubman um, I can't remember the other stories what cuisine was like if you are sat on this bench and you got hungry this is what your street snack would look like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it was pretty cool. It was a nice job. And by the time September rolled around, I still didn't have a job and my paperwork had run out. I was out of status. So I decided to come back home. And cut. <laughs> what? Dude. Anyway, we're going to continue the story from there. But that is just madness. Hmm? Your state experience is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> what? crazy man you get